Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. So today's a nice day, so I decided to do a little filming outside. We've been having a lot of rain of late, so we haven't been able to do this much as well as the fact that it's been pretty hot of late. Today it's a nice day, it's not, not raining, so I thought I'd sit outside. Uh, right, right by our studio is uh, Edison Coffee. They make great coffee and uh, they let me film here uh, every once in a while. So if you're ever in the area, or if you're in the area, go to Edison Coffee. What I was gonna do is cover part two of what I had started earlier on the uh, feedback loop, positive feedback loop, which I kind of framed more for you as an individual to take charge of your own training. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you something else that is related to it, but it's from the instructor's perspective and it's called the Pygmalion effect. Now what that basically says is that an instructor can target his time and his effort and his attitudes selectively toward students and come up with different results. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a school that's got a competition team. Uh, they have maybe 10% of their membership likes to compete. So what the instructor will often do is he'll give a lot of his time and he'll save a lot of his energy for praise and all that for that 10%, that, that group that does the competitions. And as a result, those students become the best students. On the other hand, the remaining 90% that are the ones that really pay his bills are the ones that he kind of puts on a back burner. Uh, has instructors only teaching classes when he would normally teach a class or just doesn't show up or um, just doesn't seem interested. And what will happen is those students often will decline in their abilities because they're not getting that positive reinforcement from the instructor. So basically what the Pygmalion effect does is it, it tells us, it states to us that if an instructor chooses a student and chooses to keep praising and giving positive feedback to that student, that student can improve or has a, lot, a good chance of improving. On the other hand, if a student, if a, if a teacher gives low expectations to another student, that student will sense the low expectations and therefore will not really achieve all that much. So with children, let's say I have twin boys, but one of my boys initially gives me the impression that he, he wants to be a hurdler. And maybe they both want to be, right? They're identical twins, so they've got equal abilities, theoretically speaking. The only difference is up here. But I give twin son A a lot of encouragement. Yes, you can clear those three foot hurdles. Yes, keep doing it. Whereas son B, the first time he does it, doesn't really do it. And then I have low expectations for him. And I say, you know, my son B can't clear these hurdles, but my son A can. So what happens is I just tell my son B, no, nah, that's okay, you don't have to worry about clearing the three foot hurdle, maybe we'll just give you two foot hurdles. And my other son, he clears three, and now let's increase it to three and a half, and let's increase it to four. He's now able to jump four foot hurdles when my second son can only jump two foot hurdles. Why? Because of the Pygmalion, the Pygmalion effect. I gave more encouragement to son A, and I give son B less encouragement. So what happens is by setting the bar low for my son named B, he ends up producing low results. Now that can also happen if you look at it on the grander scope of people as well, government and society tends to do that kind of stuff with different groups of population as well. You know, without getting into segmenting them or identifying the segments, you have certain groups that are, oh well, you're, it's because you're, you're this that you're gonna do really well. Or it's because you're that, that you're gonna do really poorly. So what you do is for one group of people, you set the bar really high, and they continue to strive to hit that bar. And because they're striving, they're going to hit the bar eventually, and once they hit the bar, it continues on. On the other hand, another group where you set the bar low, they're not gonna achieve much, and they never will. And what'll happen is they'll end up saying, ah, oh, you know, I'm no good at this, and, um, you know, and, and in a jiu-jitsu studio, you have a group that you never set the expectations high. That group is going to go, oh, yeah, I, I suck at jiu-jitsu. I'm no good. And, yeah, everybody always gets me in a choke. And everybody always takes my arm. And, you know, I try to not give him my arm, but he keeps taking it. On the other hand, the one who you set the, the high expectations for, you might berate them for letting their neck get caught. Why'd you let them catch your neck? Huh? Why aren't you defending? Why aren't you this? So then what happens is, you know, and I expect more from you. As a result, the one that I, I expect more from is gonna be better. 
So if you're in a school and you sense that, just be aware of it and don't let it affect you in that way. Don't become victim to a low hurdle set for you. Set your hurdles high, but don't set them so high that you can never achieve them. Set them just above what you can achieve, right? If I know I can always hit this bar, going forward, whenever I come back to this situation, so let's say I'm, I'm trying to choke people out from mount. If I can choke a certain level of opponent all the time, then I know I can do it. So now I'll set my expectation a little bit higher. Now, instead of being able to, to choke the purple belts all the time, I'm going to set myself to choke the purple belts with one stripe on them. Right? And then once you get to the point of being able to choke all of them, then go for the purple belts with two stripes. On the other hand, let's say I have a hard time choking straight old purple belts. I have a hard time choking them from the mount. So then what am I going to do? I'm going to go, well, let me only focus on the blue belt four stripes. And oh man, I just have, I have, I have one where I don't do well with them, so I'm going to keep going lower and lower. And your instructor feeds it over to you, says, you know what? Ryan, maybe instead of trying to choke purple belts, you should just try to choke blue belts because you can't choke purple belts. So guess what? I'm never going to be able to choke a purple belt. Right? So be careful of that coming from your instructor. Now, I don't want to say that it's intentional because it usually isn't. You know, I find myself, I catch myself doing that. And, I, and it's something that I, once I catch myself, I stop doing it with certain students because some students, you give them direction and they just take off with it. Other students, you give them direction and they don't go anywhere with it, right? So it's my job as an instructor to make sure I identify those students and I try to find a way to give them that positive reinforcement that lifts them. Or maybe I don't set the bar as high, but still higher than what they're doing. I don't lower the bar for them, right? I don't set it to where they cannot achieve it by striving a little bit. So if you're in a school and you see this type of thing where they're doing, you know, they're the competition team and you know, you, they have all these extra um, times with a competition team or, you know, I heard one, one group call it metal chasers, right? If you're not in the metal chasers group, you often feel left out, right? Oh, I'm just in the non-metal chasers group. I'm in the low group. You know, I'm in the group that has low expectations. Then what's going to happen is you're going to have low expectations. So avoid letting that get to you, right? Sometimes it's a game that an instructor will do to motivate a student who is not a metal chaser to become a metal chaser. Take it that way instead. How can I get into that group? You know, and, and, and as far as an individual goes, you know, you walk into a studio, here you are, brand new white belt, and you see all these upper belts. And you think to yourself, man, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get there. Believe it or not, you will. Right? When I first walked into a studio, there were only blue and purple belts, and they would just kill me. But I didn't let it get to me, and thankfully my instructor didn't let it get to me as well. Just you know, here you are at step one, they're at step 100, we're gonna get you there as time goes on. Just keep walking forward. So, if you feel that you're doing, that, that that's happening to you in your school, just go back to the previous video on the positive feedback loop and get yourself in your own positive feedback loop. Anyway, I hope this helped. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment below if you have any questions. Take care, happy training, bye-bye now.